I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center, giving divine, perfect light. I am bad. I sat on the throne, drinking nectar with Allah. I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my thirst. My oldest daughter is Nefertiti. The tears from my birth pains created the Nile. I am a beautiful woman. I gazed at the forest and burned out the Sahara Desert with a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes. <laughs> I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle, so swift, so swift. You can't catch me. For a birthday present, when he was three, I gave my son Hannibal an elephant. He gave me Rome for Mother's Day. My strength flows ever on. My son Noah built New Ark, and I stood proudly at the helm. As we sailed on a soft summer day, and I turned myself into myself and was Jesus. Men intoned my loving name, all praises, all praises. I am the one who would save. I delivered diamonds in my backyard. My bowels deliver uranium. The filings for my fingernails are semi-precious jewels. On a trip north, I caught a cold, <laughs> blew my nose, and gave oil to the Arab world. Huh. I am so hip, even my errors are correct. I had to sail west to reach east, had to round off the earth as I went. My hair thinned, and gold was laid across three continents. I am so divine, so ethereal, so surreal. I cannot be comprehended except by my own permission. What I mean is I can fly like a bird in the sky. That is a poem by Nikki Giovanni, and it's called Ego Trippin'. <laughs> I wasn't born in the Congo. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> and I actually live in Santa Clara, California. My name is Venus Jones. And now I'm gonna remove this virtual background. And the funny thing about this virtual background is that before COVID, I would have had to go all the way to Egypt to get this shot. <laughs> so what's the intention for today? Well, the intention for me um, today is to ent entertain. So if there was any, an, any doubt about that, I want to entertain you a little bit with some poetry. Uh, I am a performance poet, but I also wanted to um, let you know a little bit about my journey, my mental health journey. So you'll hear a little bit about that. You will also learn the difference between an empath and a narcissist and what they both have in common. You will also have tips on how to increase self-awareness. I wanna give thanks to the Missouri Mental Health Foundation for this opportunity. This presentation is called She Rose on the Wings of a deflated ego. Confessions of a high achiever with anxiety. Nikki Giovanni's poem and endorsement had a major impact on my life. This is a book that I borrowed from my cultural center at the University of Akron. And 
I kind of kept it so much and kept um, renewing it so much that the director actually let me have it. <laughs> so nine years later, I get a chance to meet the author, but I had moved to Florida and this is me greeting her with flowers and one of my own poems. That same night, she wrote a letter to me and said, it is a joy to experience your work. And I was like, oh, right? So what's weird is like six months later, I get a chance to meet her again. She had came back and I wrote a poem that was a tribute to her called Spice Rack that you can find in my um, first book. And this is me introducing her at Edgar College. So we've had a few different um, divine connections. This is me performing Eagle Trippin in 2011 uh, for the first time and actually memorizing it uh, for the United Nations of Dance. And this was a program, a Black History uh, presentation uh, that I had the opportunity to open. And you can see me dressed as Isis because when I hear the poem, that's the voice I hear is uh, the goddess Isis. Now you can be a high achiever with a deflated ego. And on the stage as an actress, an accomplished actress as a spoken word poet, even as a commercial model and as a radio personality, I have exuded what some might say a healthy ego or a lot of confidence. But the truth is, is that for years I have internally battled uh, this inner critic, and some people call it generalized anxiety disorder. So let me take you back to this girl. This is a girl, <laughs> a little girl named Venus, me, and she could barely raise her head or her voice. And, um, she shuffled her feet a lot. You can kind of see the symptoms of anxiety here. I was, there was a lot of wringing of hands and talking really, you know, just not very sure of herself at all. Because the truth is I didn't know how to hide the anxiety as well as I do uh, today when I get a little more anxious, right? So this is what's beautiful, though. This was the first play I was ever in. I was a Black pilgrim of all things. And I didn't know much about my um, history or heritage at all. And I went to a predominantly white school. So one might say that might have um, been one of the reasons why um, I had some anxiety, but the other reasons could have been the fact that I was a neglected child, of course, um, that can stem, create anxiety and uh, I was an adopted child. I've been with my family ever since I was two years old, my bonus family. But my mother even had um, mental health challenges. So yeah, I've, I've had to uh, deal with mental health um, my whole life. And being a military brat on top of that and, a, and living in a very strict and religious household also didn't help. But this little girl survived, obviously. Mrs. George was a huge um, other inspiration in my life. Now, this teacher uh, wasn't a poet like Nikki Giovanni, but she was someone who knew the importance of one story. So when I was only 10 years old, she, um, is the, she was the, the publisher, if you will, of my first two books. So I know I said it, my first book that I published, but actually I was published by Mrs. George, my fourth grade teacher, uh, very early. And one of the books that you see there is a, a story about a little boy in a bubble, but the other one is my, is my biography. So even at that age, she wanted us to know the importance of our story. And if there's any administrators listening, unfortunately, she says she can't do things like this as much anymore uh, because of testing. But these are the kinds of artifacts that you can keep a whole lifetime or even field trips that I remember that really, um, truly made a difference in my life. And the story I have to tell you about her is that she put me on my first big stage. 
I was in a spelling bee last minute. I didn't want to be in the spelling bee because again, I'm that shy little girl who doesn't want to even speak, but I was still a little smart, right? And obviously I was next in line. So some guy, body got sick and she says, Venus, it's, it's your turn now. You have to get up there. And I make it last minute, very little preparation. I make it to second place. Now with generalized anxiety disorder and not really knowing that's what it was, but I kind of had this panic attack. <laughs> so when I didn't win, I ran off the stage and I couldn't stop crying because I thought that everybody, I had let so everyone down and there were people running out, other students running out and like, I wish I would've got that far. Are you okay? Are you okay? And my teacher, she bends down to my level, sees my little blurry red eyes and she says, Venus, whenever you show up and do your best, you win because I couldn't stop saying I lost, I lost, I lost. And, um, and feeling like everyone wanted me to lose, right? Cause I wasn't the most popular girl. So it was, it was very, it was a very traumatic moment that I, I remember very well. Now, the funny thing is I still keep in contact with this lady, my teacher. <laughs> and I told her I was, she was gonna be a part of this presentation. And um, yeah, she was very happy to hear that, but my, she wasn't the only one that told me to show up um, and do my best. And when my mother, my bonus mother, Rosemary, also said, show up and show out. And remember, I'm also from the show me state. So <laughs> you already know. This is Rose, the Rosa and Rosa Mar Rosemary um, raised me. Uh, that's why the book is also called She Rose. Um, it's also a tribute to them. Uh, and this is a, a picture of her looking up to me. No, that was not always the case. I had some horrible nicknames as a child, including, you know, Beanie Brain and uh, things like Dumb Bunny even, let that sink in. So uh, some family members were really cruel and thought it was funny, but as an empath, um, I was very, very sensitive and uh, just happy that I made this lady who wanted me to go into the military smile. So it took a long time, but she rose on a journey from girl to goddess. Ego versus soul, what is the ego? The ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. And the soul is the spiritual part of a human being regardless um, or regarded as immortal, right? So regardless of who you are, um, if you are human, you have the two voices. Sometimes in cartoons, you would see like a little devil or maybe a little angel on one side, but the ego can get a bad rap. I, I feel like the ego can still help you rise, hence the title of this presentation. Um, I had a very active ego. Um, at the age of five, which is when Sigmund Freud says the superego actually forms. And it can also form and uh, introduce you to uh, something called shame and guilt. I want to read you this poem right now. Um, it's called The Ego Versus the Soul. I, to help you, to help further uh, expand on what I'm trying to say, I speak better through poetry. <laughs> My ego doesn't believe in sleep. It tells me, hashtag, stay woke. I said, even God took a day of rest. My ego laughed like I told a joke. My ego told me to ask for validation. It told me to grind every day. When I started to really trust my path, my ego compared me to Oprah and Yonsei. My ego shouted, you need more followers. Just post the sexy pic and get one more like. My ego said, the goal is to be rich and famous. Huh. And that's when my heart went on strike. 
My soul doesn't need a lot of praise. My ego is striving for perfection. My ego screamed, you failure, you fool. My soul said, you are headed in the divine direction. My soul cried, every breath is tribute. My ego said, ain't no time for meditation today. <laughs> My soul said, have faith, dear child. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. My body and my mind were aligned and still. My ego couldn't make a sound. My soul was stirring up infinite wisdom. And I give thanks for the inner peace I found. Some of you are here for the confessions. So here we go. These are my confessions. If I'm going to tell it, I might as well tell it all. I don't really know how the song goes that much, but. <laughs> all right. So, anyway, confessions of a high achiever with anxiety. Number one, I used to seek out praise and validation too often. Now, this, the pro of this is that I'm loved for my excellence and can sometimes get a round of applause for being poetic, poised, and powerful. I even teach the class, okay? Literally. But the con is, on my journey, I haven't always trusted myself or my choices. And social media can worsen this condition of wanting and seeking praise. And I don't know if you're like me, but I tend to even ask the waiter, if my choice was good. And if I don't get the great choice, sometimes anxiety shows up and it looks like, uh, I think I made the wrong one. <laughs> Confession of a higher achiever with anxiety number two. My self-worth has been attached to titles. You may um, see people with a lot of certifications and titles and think, wow, that's, that's really cool. Well, <laughs> the, the con is that when someone asks me what I, what I do, it's the, the list is long. It's like, what don't I do? But the con is also, um, the careers are not lifelong. So if, you're, if you attach your self-worth to a title, it can be very dangerous uh, and your ego can allow you to trip up. Confessions of a high achiever with anxiety number three. Adversity, well, adversity used to be my fuel up until now. The pro is Shiro status and you're loved by a lot of people for saying the word yes. The con is you can take on too much and you need to reframe the idea of rest as something at, that actually is best for you and not just other people. Because if you don't rest, well, you can end up in the hospital. This is me. <laughs> this is me in the hospital because of an inner critic that had me saying things like this in my head. I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough. I am not enough. Sound familiar? Hashtag no sleep is very dangerous. And we live in a culture of crazy busy nuts. And it's almost praised uh, for you not to take a rest and be in the rat race is <laughs> almost expected as an example of success. But I'm here to remind you that rest is a beautiful thing and you don't have to be on all the time. Chesley Chris, 
um, was uh, a beautiful inside and out spiritual person and being. And unfortunately, recently she took her life and a lot of people thought she had it all. But again, as you know, more and more people are learning that when you uh, are battling an inner critic, it's not about what happens on the outside. It's not about accomplishments. It's about making sure that you are taking care of yourself and not just other people. So Chesley, this is a, a letter from her mother um, to those who didn't believe it was true that she could do such a thing as take her own life. Chesley lived both a public and private life. In her private life, she was dealing with high functioning depression, which she hid from everyone, including me, until very shortly before her death. And I still get a little emotional in this part because when I see Chesley, I see myself. And I was a pageant queen too, a little bit. So it's a lot of pressure to smile. And as Beyonce, Beyonce would say in a song, pretty can hurt. And a lot of people don't wanna talk about that. But I hope we all have learned from her mother and Chesley that it is very important to be as authentic as we can be and not be afraid to talk about mental health. Now, we've talked a lot about the deflated ego. Now let's talk about the inflated ego and the difference between empaths and what some people might call narcissists. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen uh, Kanye West's documentary, which I think is brilliant by the way, but here are some of his quotes. I don't really want to get in a debate about Kanye West, if he's cocky or is he confident? Is he, a, is he an empath or is he a narcissist? I don't really know. But what I do know for sure is that you can also have an inflated ego uh, when you're surrounded by a lot of yes men uh, versus the people who are telling you no, which can be kind of the other extreme. And that can um, lead to death as well. Um, I think about Michael Jackson and the people that were around him and other um, famous celebrities who have struggled with issues and may not have always had um, someone to keep them grounded. Unfortunately, according to 2018's um, Open Psychology Journal, the excessive posting of selfies is associated with the increasing rise in narcissism by an average of 25%. So the question is, do you have a god or goddess complex? Okay. If you're not sure, we'll take a test. This is the narcissist test. Step one, I want you to take a moment to think about yourself. Okay, step two, if you've made it to step two, you are not a narcissist. <laughs> okay, so I found this joke, I think it's funny, but some people are married to narcissists, some people are struggling with this idea of, or question of if they might be one. So I really wanna be a little more serious here and ask you the question, of who do you think you are? Now, my grandma would ask me that sometimes, who do you think you are? And um, I do feel like I'm a child of God or the most high, the God of my understanding, but this is an important question. And I wonder if you have an answer to it. But the ego asked the question, it tends to ask the question, how am I different? from other people. Your higher self or higher soul um, asks the question, how are we the same? And here we go. 
What do empaths and narcissists have in common, you ask? Well, a person's energy, as it says here, can tell you more about them than their words. And I think one of the greatest compliments that I've ever received is, I love your spirit. And the thing that we all really want to hear is that. I mean, that's the ultimate compliment, in my opinion. But if you don't believe me, Oprah once said, every person alive wants to know, did you hear me? Did you see me? And did what I say matter? She could have interviewed a serial killer or a prime minister, it didn't matter, they all would turn to her and say, is that okay? In other words, am I okay? So validation is what we all want. And if that's the truth, then what is the solution? The solution is to be able to know where you are on the spectrum. And we can sometimes fool ourselves that we are closer to this way or that way or somewhere in the middle when we may not be. So how, what are the benefits of self-awareness? When in practice, you recognize what you do well and what you need to improve. You can increase your happiness level by living in alignment. And you become a better leader when you understand other people's behavior. And lastly, another benefit of self-awareness is you strengthen relationships by managing your emotions. And the alignment part, woo. Well, I love that. We all wanna be in alignment with our thoughts, our actions and our words, because it was Mahatma Gandhi who said, that is what happiness looks like. How do you get there? How do you increase self-awareness? Meditation. Yes, meditate, <laughs> right? You can write your journal um, in your journal. I, I do workshops called Journaling Your Journey. Uh, and I love journaling and harvesting journals. You could take tests, psychometric tests. You can ask trusted friends to tell you the truth and be honest with you about how you can improve. And then you can also imagine or pretend to be someone else. So because I was introduced to theater at such a young age, it allowed me to do just that, the last thing, which was imagine. And I believe that the fastest way to increase your empathy and your self-awareness and your emotional intelligence in general is through improv theater, spoken word art, if it's written in a persona, right? Or through journaling, because no other field allows you to express yourself in different ways like that than art. And when I say I wage peace through poetry, which is my model, it's also allowing you to wage um, inner peace. So, I challenge you if you've never taken an improv class to do that or write a spoken word poem and yeah, recite it. Because when you do, a lot of times you gotta meditate beforehand. You gotta write it. You gotta test yourself and ask other people. <laughs> so are you a female leader looking for a mindset or a message mentor? If so, and you enjoyed this presentation, I want you to know that you can stay in touch with me at venusjones.com um, and subscribe to my email list. I'm also a teacher on Insight Timer, which is a meditation app. Um, I'm also at uh, Venus Love Jones on Instagram and Patreon and Twitter. And yes, I also um, teach a series, a leadership series called She Rose Live, where you can find more information. Now, this is the message I wanna leave you with this picture, remember this picture? Where all of this lack of pausing, 
got me in this position where I'm in the hospital saying things like, I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough. I'm not enough. Well, I want you to repeat after me. I am good enough. I have done enough. I am enough. Yes, you are. I want you to keep looking up and keep looking out because when we do, there's a lot less fear and there's a lot less doubt. Peace.